Good afternoon, America. Today is Thursday, um, September the 13th. It is 1.09 p.m. We're going to start off with Psalms 133, a song of access of King David. It is only three verses, and those three verses are all read uh, for discipleship, and the last verse, verse 3, is a split verse. It's part red and part blue for salvation. The red part comes first. Here it is a psalm for the unity of brethren, a song of degrees of David, a psalm for the unity of brethren. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, exclamation mark. How, behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, exclamation mark. Two, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirt of his garment. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirt of his garment. Three, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. That is the red part of verse 3. The blue part says, For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Let's read it from here. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity! Exclamation mark. It is like precious oil poured, poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the color of his robe. Three, it is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestowed his blessing, even life forevermore. It is as if the dew of Hermon were, were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestowed his blessing, even life forevermore. Beautiful song. Three verses. Okay. We are in our new book, study book. Yesterday we read about Esther and Hammond and his prideful self. Today we're going to be reading Colossal. Uh, having heavenly thoughts and desires of the old nation. Uh, Having heavenly thoughts and desires of the old nature. 12. Put on the new love nature. Follow guidelines for Christian family. Um, uh, Dr. Stanley <clears throat> also um, uh, preached about this, uh, Colossal 3, One New Life in Christ. And... Um, Psalms 3 1, we'll be reading the entire, Colossal 3 1, we'll be reading his entire, this entire chapter. Um, false teachings from, it talks about false teachings from Jews, Greeks, and Orientals. Uh, we have a couple of new words here Gnosticism, Gnosticism. The Gnosticism, group which claims secret knowledge and powers and downgrades Christ to be an only a kind of angel, according to this particular group. Uh, they're called Gnosticism, a group which proclaims secret knowledge and powers and downgrades Christ to be an only a kind of angel. Okay. Um, the... Epistles of Paul, the, these are prison epistles. They were Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Philemon, written in Roman prison by Paul, who was once named Saul. Um, Colossians, Ephes Ephesians, Philippians, and Philippians. Epistles, Epistles, they are uh, one of the letters of the New Testament with, written by Paul. Uh, Paul, oh, four of them are written by Paul. 
uh, Onesimus. He was converted. He was a converted slave, and his name means useful. Onesimus. He was a converted slave. Uh, he spent some time with one of the disciples, and uh, when he returned to his master, he was a totally different individual. Okay, it's, it, 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 when you spend time with Christ, when you spend time with any of his disciples, you end up turning into a different individual from the inside out. So when he went back to his master, he was a, a, a very different servant. And his name actually means useful. Okay. Um, so let's go to Colossals. And we're going to get an introduction into this because we haven't really used it much. I do remember these PowerPoints. So, yes, we have read from it once in the old book that we were using. So, we're going to get an introduction this morning. The author of Colossians are Paul the Apostle. Dates written between A.D. 60 and 61. Named after the addressee of the letter, the Church of Coloss. Background. Paul establishes the church at Ephesians on his second missionary journey. While at Ephesians, he develops a special concern for the church at Coloss. Even though he never visited there, Coloss, once similar to the thriving commercial cities of her neighbor, Laodicea and Heropolis, is declining. The city is infiltrated with false teaching from the Greeks, Jews, and Orientals. Paul responds to these false teaching, especially that of the Ganesians, which claim secret knowledge and powers and downgrades Christ to being only a kind of angel. Paul sends this letter by way of Tychicus Ty, 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 and, uh, and the converted slave Onesius. Onis Onesimus to the church at Colossal after Epaphras visit and report the conditions there. Colossals, Ephesians, Philippians, and Philemon uh, comprises Paul's prison epistles. Where written from a Roman prison um, to the church at Colossal. Contents. The first portion of Colossians is uh, uh, doctrinal in nature, and the last is practical application. Paul combats the false teachers of legis, 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 legalism, angel worship, that was part of their thing, and ceremonialism. His defense against such hero is coupled with his urging commitment to the lordship of Christ. Believers are encouraged to put off the old man and put on the new man by living Righteous lives before God. These rules for holy living give them freedom from human regulations as they follow Christ's example. That frees us from many of the human regulations. Uh, key words, supremacy, head. The book of Colossians is written to a church being deluded with vain worldly philosophy the supremacy of Christ is in every area of life is emphasized as Christ is presented as head of the body, his church. Theme. Again, these are PowerPoints that don't need to be proven. Jesus alone is sufficient to meet every need of our lives, and that is a fact. The next fact, the perfect reflection of the invisible God is the perfect Jesus Christ. Next fact, philosophies which do not exalt Christ are not from God. So those of uh, those religions that count him as just an angel, as the Ganesians did, are not from God. There are also other uh, religions that count him as just another prophet, as the Muslims do. That is not of God. Okay, our relationship with God is reflected through our relationship with others. This is true. How you treat others determines your relationship with Christ. Uh, and if you treat others with good, patience, compassion, that reflects your relationship with Christ. Because those are all his characteristics. 
He was compassionate. He was good. He was patient. And he was the supreme being. Okay? So let's go into our reading for today, uh, which will be chapter 3. And this is a really a short, short book. It only has four chapters. Uh, in chapter 3, we have an array of colors here. We have a lot of red for discipleship. We have some yellow for family. We have some green for love. And we have at least four verses of black for sin. And it talks about have heavenly thoughts and desires. Cast off the old sin nature. Put on the new love nature. And follow guidelines for the Christian family. We will be reading it both from my Bible as well as from this one to be absolutely sure that you understand what is being read to you. And in this book, it says Rules for Holy Living. Um, this particular chapter has um, 25 verses. Let's begin. No uppercase lettering at all. Verse 1, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Um, verse 1, 2, and 3 are read for discipleship. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. 2, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. 3, for ye are dead and your life is hid. From, with Christ in God. So let's take it from here. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Two, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Three, four, you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Three is is blue for salvation when christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory for when christ who is your life appears then you also will appear with him in glory five six and seven is black for sin mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanness inordinate affection evil conspicuousness and covetousness, which is idolatry. Six, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Seven, in the which ye also walk sometimes when ye lived in them. So let's take it from here. Five says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, uh, greed, which is idolatry. Greed is a terrible thing. It, 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 greed will make you kill a person for their life insurance policies or anything else that they may have that uh, the evil are attracted to. So greed and fornication is the order of today. Um, uh, I will read that again. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, that is the epidemic issue today. We are laying down, my sisters, are laying down with brothers who mean them no good. A man can give you many things. He can give you his stones freely. His stones will be his testicles, that which is in between his legs. He'll give it to you freely. And he expects for you to give your stuff to him freely also. Um, that, is Im uh, that is sexual immorality. Um, a lot of times we want that which we should not have. Those things that belong to a husband or a wife, we give away to the swine uh, of the world. And they take advantage of us and never do anything honorable, such as giving. It's more honorable for a man to give you his name 
than it is to give you that which is between his legs. It is more honorable to be a wife than it is to be a girlfriend or a baby mama or any other title. Uh, it's more honorable to be a husband than to be a boyfriend or a baby daddy or anything else. So go for that which is more honorable, sisters. Um, for God looks upon you with great value, so you should look upon yourself with the same eyes, with great value. Okay? Um, six, because of these, the wrath of God is coming, and this is true. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming, and we can see it going on today. Um, we can see where God walks through a state and leaves straight disaster. And those who uh, do make it out of such a disastrous situation, they call themselves being lucky. But like I said to you, luck is just a four-letter word that means absolutely nothing that rhymes with duck. Uh, if the Lord makes it possible for you to escape harm, you have been blessed, period. Not lucky, blessed. All right? Six, because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Seven, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. Once you get to know the Lord, your walk changes. Your thoughts changes. Your behavior changes. Everything about you changes except for the outward appearance. That remains the same. But the inside of you is changed right? just the same way as Eunices was changed when he returned to his master he was a new man a man who had spent some time with one of the disciples of God okay so set eight nine ten and eleven is read for discipleship but now ye also put off all this all these anger don't be so quick to be angry with someone don't stay angry forevermore. Anger, wrath, malice. Don't be deceptive. Don't, don't maliciously take that which does not belong to you. Don't connive your way into someone's life simply because they have money. Don't kill them for their insurance policy. Don't do these things. Blasphemy. Watch what comes out of your mouth. It should not be something that is offensive to others, like your elders and the sisters and the children. You should be mindful of how you speak when they are standing nearby. If there are women nearby, elders nearby, you should mind your speech. Okay? Filthy communication out of your mouth. Again, minding your speech. Nine, lie not one to another don't lie don't just tell the truth tell the truth tell the truth okay seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds the old man used to lie all the time don't do that 10 and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him who created us god Okay, Christ is our Savior, so we are to be mimicking his behavior here on earth. Uh, 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, bar bar barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Let's take it from here, verse 8. But now you must rid yourself of such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander. Don't speak against, don't be so quick to speak against your brethren or your sister or your parents. Don't, don't dishonor your parents. If something you're going to share with someone is going to make your parents look bad, then you are not to share that information, okay? If your parents were abusive to you, Unless you're talking to a police officer uh, or something like that, you are not to share this information just readily like that. You are not to make your parents look bad, okay? 
Even if they have done something bad, you are not to dishonor them. All right? Uh, and you are not to be so quick to slander your brother. Who's your brother? Every man out there that you see is your brother. Who's your sister? Every woman that you pass by in the street is your sister. Who's your neighbor? Everybody that you come across with, if you're walking on the same street, that's your neighbor. If you see something going on and your neighbor may be in trouble, don't just walk away and act like it's not your business. Pick up your telephone, call 911 and help your brethren and help your sister. Uh, if you see someone who's, you know, you just heard an amber alert and you see the child with the individual, you see the child with the clothes that the amber alert said that they had on, don't act like you don't care because it's not your child. Follow that individual. Call 911. Let them know what street you on. Let them know what street they're heading. Just take part. Care. Care. Because it could have been your child. Okay? Um, if someone comes to you and say, hey, I'm going to kill my husband or I'm going to kill my wife, I'm going to do it this way, I'm going to do it that way, Make sure you tell someone, 911 is the number. I'm not the kind of person you can talk to and tell, tell me things like that because I'm going to stop you right away. And I'm going to rebuke that demon out of you and tell you that this is not the way to go. You are not to be willing to give up your freedom for no one. You are not to be willing to take part in such things for no one. Somebody calls you up and say, hey, I need to get rid of this body. No, sir, you need you 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 don't need me to get rid of nothing. And if you say something, if you call me up and say, Brenda, I need to get rid of this body, nobody would call me up and say that anyway. But if you did, the next number I would call would be 911. And I would give them your number. Okay? There's nobody I know, whether it's a son, a daughter, a cousin, a niece a family member, a friend, a neighbor, that I would take part in such things. And you shouldn't either. All right? Because you will get the death penalty and they'll get 45 years. And you were just a person who helped move the body from one place to another. You didn't actually kill the individual and you get more time. It's not worth it. Okay, eight, but now you must rid yourself of such things as these. Anger, rage is never a good emotion. Yes, Christ showed it when he went into the temple and he saw them on a Sabbath day selling like it was just a regular day. Yeah, he went into a rage. He turned over tables. He let the doves out. There's a time for all things. If the rage is justifiable, then that's fine. It is justifiable. If somebody comes in my home at nighttime and I wake up and here you are standing above me with something uh, pointing at me and blah, 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 blah. Yes, I'm going to go into a rage. You picked the wrong house. Okay, so there's a time and a place for everything. If I go somewhere and I see somebody molesting a child, yes, I'm going to go into a rage. I'm not going to be like that guy in Penn State who saw the child in the shower being molested by our coach. He went and told somebody, no, sir, I would have went and got me a pipe and took off my garment, put it on the child, dialed 911, gave the child the phone, and took that pipe and had my way with my brother. Leave him alive so you don't catch a murder charge. But beat the crap out of him. Okay, there's a time and a place for everything. And it don't have to be my child that you're molesting for me to take part in the rescue or for you to take part in the rescue of that child. Because this world is so soft on crime, you encourage it. You encourage this. Because what is what does the Bible say about a pedophile? Death is their punishment. Death is their punishment. What does the church say? 
not the church, what the Bible says about murder. If it's an accident, it's different. But if it's intentional, death is the punishment. And if you would implement the laws of God into our laws, you would seriously, seriously decrease the number of murders in the world. You would discourage the people from committing these acts because the consequences are dire. When you give someone the death penalty, they should not be allowed to live 5, 10, 15 years on death row. This, this, is, this is a monstrosity. That's why the people are continuously to do the same things over and over again. Because the world is too soft on crime. Okay, but now you must rid yourself of such things as these anger. Rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Nine, do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. Ten, and put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator, which is God and his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Eleven, here there. Here, there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbar barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Okay, 12 to 14 is green for love. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Behave as the elect of God. Okay. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Those are the characters you are to be displaying. Let me read it again. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and be beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Yes, you ought to be quick to forgive your sister or your brother. It doesn't matter what they did. They murdered someone you love. You still must forgive them because you cannot expect God to forgive you if you can't forgive your brother. Okay? Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. 14. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Don't say I'm eternally grateful and don't mention God. Who are you eternally grateful to? America? Okay, so let's take it from 12 to 15. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. 13. Bear each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. 14. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. Okay. 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart since as a member of one body you are called to peace and be thankful. All right. If somebody does something good to you, you ought to thank God that that person blessed you. And you ought to ask God to bless that person who has just blessed you. All right? You ought to give God all the glory for anything good that comes your way. And you ought to even glorify him for chastising us. Yes, because sometimes, as a good parent does, he has to chastise us. I've been chastised by the Lord my, him myself for things I do. That's why I fear him. Yeah, when you have a, 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 a deep sense of fear for God, it will determine the things you, you will do and you will not do. 
the things you will take part in will be determined based on your fear of God. But if you fear not God, you'll do all kinds of horrible things. Okay? So let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as a member of one body you are called to peace and be thankful. Six, 16 and 17 is read for discipleship. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and abnitioning one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Amen. 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So let's take it here. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish, admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Okay, 18. 19, 20, 21, and 22 is yellow for family. Listen up. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. It doesn't say, girlfriends, submit yourself to your girlfriends. It doesn't say, boyfriends, commit yourself to your boyfriends. It doesn't say, submit yourself to your baby daddies. It doesn't say, submit yourself to your long-time friend. It doesn't say that. It says, wives. So it's more honorable to be a wife. Okay? Submit yourself unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. 19. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Yes, it's more honorable to be a husband. Husband, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Do not mistreat them. Do not... Give them harsh words. Do not neglect them. Children, obey your parents as in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with I serve it as men please us, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Like I said, if you have a healthy fear for God, it will it, it keep you from doing a whole lot of nonsense. Okay, let's take it from here, 18. Rules for Christian household. Wives, submit to yourself, submit to your husband as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, verse 20. Obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. 21. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. 22. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only when their eye is on you and to win their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Okay, 22 and tw 23 and 24, again, is read for discipleship. And whatsoever ye do, do it heart heartedly as to the Lord and not unto man. Whatever you do, do it with a good heart as pleasing to the Lord and not trying to be pleasing to man. All right, 24, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord. Christ, yes. 23, whatever you do, work at, it, uh, work at it with your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. 24, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Whatever you're doing, whether you're a doctor, uh, a funeral director, a nurse, a bartender, whatever you do, do it good. As if you were serving the Lord. All right? Because you are serving him in all you do. Except for that which you do that is evil. 
-hmm. All right? And 25 is black for saying, And he that does his wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done, and there is no respect of person. This is a fact. This is a fact, America. It may take a long time coming before you get your due reward for the wickedness you have done, but you will surely receive it as the Lord liveth. Okay, I will read that again. But he that does his wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. And there is no respect to a person. God has no respect to a person at all. Okay, let's read it from here. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for his wrong, and there is no favoritism in God at all. All right? I hope you got something out of that. I hope it helps you. Let's go through our emergency contact, which I haven't done in a couple of days. Father God, forgive me. Be prepared for an emergency. Being prepared means being equipped with the proper supplies you may need in the event of an emergency or disaster. Two, keep your supplies in an easy-to-carry emergency preparedness kit that you can use at home or take with you in case you must evacuate. At a minimum, you should have the basic supply listed below. I put number one as your Bible and keep your gas tank at least half full. Um, water. One gallon per person per day, three days supply for evacuation, two weeks supply for home, food, non-perishable, easy to prepare items, three days supply for evacuation, two weeks supply for home, flashlight available at the Red Cross store, battery power or hand cranked radio caller, nor radio, weather radio if possible is available at the Red Cross store, extra batteries, first aid kit available at the Red Cross store. Medication, seven-day supplies and medical items, multi-purpose tools, sanitation and personal hygiene items, copies of personal documents, medical lists and pertinent medical information, proof of address, deed, lease to home, passports, birth certificate, insurance policies, cell phone with charges, family and emergency contact information, extra cash, emergency blanket available at the Red Cross store, maps, or uh, consider the needs of all family members and supplies to your kit. Add supplies to your kit. Suggest the items to help meet additional needs are medical supplies, hearing aid with extra batteries, glasses, contact lenses, syringes for those of you who are diabetic and need to get take injections, um, oxygen uh, for those of you who are on, uh, on oxygen. Make sure that your tanks are always full. Um, for those of you who have the more modern, lighter weight oxygen, um, you don't have to worry because it regenerates itself. Uh, also, for those of you who use catheters, make sure you have sufficient enough catheters so that you can remove that, uh, the, the fluid out of yourself because you are not able to do it uh, on your own. So make sure you have enough catheters. Um, for those of you who are on dialysis and you're blessed enough to have a portable dialysis machine, make sure that you have all that you need to make that item work for you. Okay, games and activity for children. I don't even know why this is on there. Pet supplies. For those of you who have beasts, you will need their collars, their, their lease. You will need a bowl. You will need food for them. And a carrier, for those of you who don't think your beast can walk and though they have more legs than you. Uh, Two-way radio. Uh, extra set of car keys and house keys. Manual can opener. Don't forget, when, when a disaster is at hand, electricity is the, is the last thing available. All right? Additional supplies to keep at home or in your survival kit based on a type of disaster. A whistle. I haven't gotten that yet. Um, N95, a surgical mask. Uh, uh, matches, rain gear, towels, work gloves, tool supplies for securing your home, extra clothing, hat, and sturdy shoes, plastic sheeting, duct tape, scissors, Household liquid bleach, entertainment items, blanket, or sleeping bag. 
uh, first aid kit. This is the minimum you should have. I wish I could get up and get my first aid kit. I brought a first aid kit. I will show it to you tomorrow. And I brought this one from CVS, and it has a blanket inside of it. So try not to be too cheap on getting your first aid kit. It only cost me $16, but it has 250 items in there. Um, they had another smaller one that had about 150 items in there. So I went with the larger one that had more items in there and even had a blanket in there. So that was really cool. Um, I also brought some other items that I'd like to share with you tomorrow so that I can show you what it looks like. Uh, two observing compressed dressings. All of this stuff here will be in your first aid kit. Uh, 25 adhesive bandages, assorted sizes, one adhesive cloth tape, 10 yards by one inch, five antibiotic ointment packages, approximately one gram, five antiseptic white packages, two packs of aspirin, 81 milligrams each, one blanket, space blanket, uh, available at the Red Cross store. Maybe this is the blanket that I have in my first aid kit. I'm not sure, but we can check it out tomorrow. I'll be willing to open it up and let you see what's in it. One breathing barrier with one-way valve. I haven't gotten that yet. One uh, instant cold compress. Uh, two pairs of uh, non-lactic gloves, size large. I'm going to buy another box of uh, gloves, and it usually has about 180 to 200 gloves in it. That's better to have. Two hydrocortisone ointment packages, possibly one gram scissors. All that is in the first aid kit that I just purchased. One roll of bandages, three inches wide. Another roll of bandages, four inches wide, five sterile gold pads, three by three inches, five sterile gold pads, four by four inches. These are sterile pads uh, for wounds that you need to cover up. It's best to use sterile goals for them. Oral thermometer, I have now two. I think one came in the first aid kit, and I also brought one at Aldi's. Uh, uh, please, no mercury and no glass, okay? Two triangular bandages, a tweezers, first aid instruction kit booklet that also comes in your first aid kit. Um, that will be all for today. I apologize that I haven't shared this with you in a couple of days, the emergency preparedness kit, but I will make it up to you by sharing it with you for a couple more days. My name is Brenda Guerrero. Thank you for joining us here at Spiritual Water. Um, in the meantime, may the peace of God be upon thee, may the protection of God surround thee, may the will of God come from thee. Until the next time, enjoy your day.